Krishna, everyone. A very warm welcome back again to our um, series on, on the glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Happy to be with you. So, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastata Deshatarane Jai Prabhupada. So, in last Friday's class, we spoke about the Pandavas ex extended stay in, in Vrindavan and specifically in the forest of Kamivan during their 13 years in exile. And just how attached they became to Vrindavan as a result of living there for quite some time can be seen in the fact that they still reside there <laughs> to this very day. How so? They reside there along the banks of the uh, sacred Shamakund. We have our Shamakund and Radhakund. So to this very day, they live on the banks of Shamakund. And how do we know this? Well, <coughs> 500 years ago, when Raghunath Das Goswami was excavating and developing Radhakund and, and Shamakund, it was decided that a number of trees uh, would have to be cut down uh, in order to make way for the excavation of Shamakund. It was a forested area. So that was part of the planning. These trees would be cut down. <coughs> but one night, um, Raghunath Das Goswami had a dream in which Maharaj Yudhishthir appeared to him and revealed that he and his brothers resided in the bodies of five trees in particular on the banks of Shamakund. And he requested that they be allowed to stay there like that, that don't cut down the trees. <laughs> it's very mystical. So of course, Raghunath Das Goswami at, at once canceled the plan to cut down the trees. And um, it's for this reason that compared to Radhakun, which is uh, like rectangular in, in shape, the shape of uh, Shamakund is irregular because they had to excavate the lake in such a way that they didn't touch those trees. Now since the time of Raghunath Das Goswami, <coughs> four of those trees have died, but um, it's described that all five brothers now reside in one tree on the banks of Shamakund, where they continue their bhajan in samadhi, just as Uddhava does in creepers next to Kusham Shuravara. So beautiful. Some years ago, I took a Perkama party there to Radhakund Shamakund, and we were having a, 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 a kirtan next to that surviving tree on the banks of um, Shamakund. A big storm came up all of a sudden, and one of the branches was apparently weak, and it snapped off and it fell to the ground. And I asked the Pajari who was in charge of that area, of that area if I could have that branch to that tree, and he said yes, and I, I made japa beads out of that uh, sacred branch from that tree. <coughs> so <coughs> one might wonder how the Pandavas, who, you know, they come from Indra Prastra, <laughs> they're Kattriyas, and wh whose relationship with Krishna was as a, as a relative, um, as a relative of Krishna, Krishna was their cousin, and um, how did they become so attracted to Vrindavan <laughs> and Kamivan in particular, where the loving mood of bhakti is much more intimate? They also have bhakti, but their bhakti is like, again, they're relatives of Krishna. Krishna's their well-wisher, but um, how do they become so attracted to Vrindavan where the mood is much, much more intimate? So the Acharyas answered that question by saying, and I'll quote, Amongst the forest of Braja, the, speciali the, the speciality of Kamyavan is that it radiates the love of the gopis, which is easily assimilated by pure-hearted souls like the Pandavas. <laughs> Amongst the forest of Braja, the speciality of Kamyavan is that it radiates the love of the gopis, which is easily assimilated in pure-hearted souls like the Pandavas. So that's where they got it by association with the forest. Vrindavan so powerful. And so even though 
duty eventually called the Pandavas to, to, to leave Kambivan, they remain in Vrindavan to this very day in these, you could say, subtle spiritual forms within the trees that we mentioned. And they continue to taste Braj Bhakti at Shamkund. So, what to speak of residing in, in a, a desire tree in Vrindavan, <laughs> these male personalities, Shasta goes so far as to say that a male, a man, can actually become a gopi in Vrindavan in his self-same lifetime. One may be initially surprised that, that, a, that a, a, a male, a man, would want to become a female, a gopi. It might, to a newcomer, it might seem more natural that, that he would want to become a gopa, a cowherd boy, and certainly some do. But actually, it shouldn't be surprising that um, a male would want to become a gopi on the transcendental platform in, in Vrindavan. It's completely natural. And Prabhupada discusses this in Nectar of Devotion, chapter 16. He writes, and I quote, This development of conjugal love for Krishna is not manifested in women only. The material body has nothing to do with spiritual loving affairs. A woman may develop an attitude for becoming a friend of Krishna, like a gopa. And similarly, a man may develop the feature of becoming a gopi in Vrindavan. How a devotee in the form of a man can desire to become a gopi is stated in the Padma Purana." Unquote. So there, in that purport, uh, Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada goes on to tell this, how, how a man can desire to become a gopi. Um, he paraphrases the um, Padma Purana where he says, during Lord Ramachandra's pastimes on earth, a number of sages in the Dandakaranya forest, where Ramachandra was exiled, they became captivated by the beauty of Ram, or Lord Ramachandra, these men. And they desired an amorous relationship with him. But they knew, however, that it wasn't possible, <laughs> if only because, well, one reason was Lord Ramachandra, being an ideal king, could only accept one wife, Sita. So Lord Ramachandra blessed those sages that when he would appear as Lord Krishna later on in Dipura Yuga, they could take birth as Brajagopis and enjoy loving pastimes with him. And then Prabhupada concludes by saying, quote, I'll quote from here, we should carefully note that conjugal love for Krishna, either as a gopi or a queen, is not limited to women. Even men can develop such sentiments, as was evidenced by the, evidenced by the sages of Dandakaranya. And of course, we have the example of Lord Shiva. Most devotees know that one time Lord Shiva, upon hearing the, the glories of Vrindavan, he uh, went to Braj with the desire to participate in the Rasa dance. Uh, and by Purnamasi's grace, because we told this story before, so we're just summarizing. By Purnamasi's grace, he attained the, the form of a gopi, although temporarily, by bathing in the monster over a lake. There's another instance of a male becoming gopi. Similarly, in the uh, Narada Purana, Uttara Bhaga, chapter 80, it's described that um, with the help of Rindadevi, <coughs> Narada Muni bathed in Kusum Sarovra and he became uh, Naradi Gopi. He also experienced this amorous love that the Gopis have for um, Krishna. He became Naradi Gopi. And it was just after that that he wrote his famous uh, Narada Bhakti Sutras in which we get a glimpse of Braja Bhakti. Now, in one sense, you could say it's natural for a male to want to become a gopi or a wife of Krishna in Dwarka. Um, because philosophically, we know all living entities are female in relationship to the Lord. In Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, <coughs> Prabhupada writes, <coughs> quote, The Lord is described as the Parama Purusha, 
or the supreme male personality. Thus the affection between the Lord and the living entities is something like that between uh, the male and the female. Underlying philosophical principle. <clears throat> And in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, he writes, quote, Everyone should understand that Krishna is the real husband of all living entities, who are described in the Bhagavad Gita as Prakriti, female, not Purusha, male. And it's for this reason that, gen well, one of the reasons that generally the followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they desire to serve um, Krishna as uh, gopis or manjaris. That's generally understood the followers of Mahaprabhu, that's their aspiration. And Prabhupada confirms this in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think it's Madhya Leela 1131. Quote, <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers mainly worship Lord Krishna in Madhuri Ras. Other Vaishnavacharyas recommend worship up to Vatsalya Ras. Vatsalya Ras, uh, having Krishna as your child. Therefore, Rupa Goswami in his, Prabhupada writes, therefore, Rupa Goswami in his Vidagda Madhava uh, 1.2 describes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult as supreme. And Prabhupada continues Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this age of Kali to exhibit the super excellence of Madhurya Ras, a, gi a gift never previously bestowed on any, uh, by any uh, Acharya or incarnation. Consequently, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is accepted as the most magnanimous incarnation. It is he only who distributed love of Krishna while exhibiting the super excellence of loving Krishna in the conjugal rasa. Yeah. Very deep purport there. <laughs> This is also confirmed, uh, I found another quote, uh, by Ramananda Rai in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 8.228. Ramananda Rai says, Ata eva gopi bhava kari angikara ratri dina chinte radha krishnera vihara. Quote, Therefore one should accept the mood of the gopis in their service. In such a transcendental mood, one should always think of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Yeah. So it's natural to, to think in that way, to inspire, to aspire in that way, if, if one so chooses. Now, what's really, really interesting is that uh, in relationship, we're getting back to the Pandavas here, and to Arjuna in particular. In, in Padma Purana, Uttarakhanda, chapter 74, Yes, Uttarakhanda 74. There's a, a detailed description how our Pandava Arjuna, what's to speak of Shiva and Narada Muni, <laughs> um, our Pandava Arjuna once became a gopi. Yes. And it's an identity he still retains to the present day. So I'd like to share that with you. I really enjoyed reading it, Padma Purana. Prabhupada often quotes Padma Purana. So it's really exciting. So therein it's described that one time Krishna and Arjuna were resting beneath a tree on the bank of the Jamuna River in Vrindavan. And Arjuna took Krishna's hand and he asked, and I'll quote Padma Purana here. Krishna, uh, Arjuna asked Krishna, quote, O Krishna, if you truly accept me as a faithful and intimate friend, which he was, tell me something of your beloved gopis that you have not disclosed to anyone else, including even great souls like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma. <laughs> tell me of the various kinds of gopis, their names, where they live, how they dress, what their ages are, and how you exchange loving pastimes with them. Tell me, Krishna, of the mysteries of the cowherd girl's love for you and of your love for them. Krishna had, uh, Arjuna had an interest like this. He's posing this question, po posing this question. He has this desire to know. <laughs> so Krishna was a little surprised by his warrior friend's request. And Krishna replied, 
Arjuna, what you have asked cannot be known even by people of the spiritual world, what to mention the men and women of this world, no matter how dear they are to me. But Arjuna had this desire, this very strong desire, so he kept persisting. And finally Krishna <laughs> relented, he, he embraced Arjuna and he said, Arjuna, what you have asked for cannot be explained in words. You must experience it directly in a body fit for the task. Then he said, if this is your interest, Arjun, you begin worship of the goddess Tripura Sundari, who guards over my eternal realm of Braja, and ask her for the fulfillment of your desires. Without her blessing, even I cannot satisfy your requests. So I did some research and Tripu Tripura Sundari is, is a form of yoga maya, Purnamasi. So Arjuna immediately proceeded to, to uh, a, a temple of Tripura Sundari, which was situated in a, in a beautiful grove in, in, in Braja, which described there were flower bearing trees resounding with a chatter of, of parrots and cuckoos and doves. And there, Padma Purana relates that golden-complexioned Tripura Sundari, who was richly ornamented and dressed in red, was sitting on a lotus be beside stalks of sugar cane. And in, in her four hands, she held um, a bow, a goad for elephants, a noose, and a, a, a sheath uh, for flower arrows. Interesting expansion of Purnamasi. And as Arjuna bowed down before her, she transformed herself into the form of a 16-year-old girl whose uh, left foot rested on, a, rested on a Sri Yantra. And then Arjuna introduced himself. He said, Dear Goddess Tripura, uh, Tripura Sundari, I am known as Arjuna. Now Padma Purana says that Tripura Sundari was well acquainted with Arjuna's fame as a friend of the Lord and she also knew of Arjuna's desire to enter into the secrets of Braja. The secrets of Braja. Which is why she had assumed that the form of a young girl to teach him. So, you know, seek and ye, she fi seek and ye shall find. <laughs> then and there, she initiated Arjuna into the science known as Balavidya, the science of Balavidya, wherein by one can understand the secrets of Vrindavan. And this, this science of Balavidya, I did some research, it requires um, austerities, uh, the chanting of, of an appropriate mantra, and the daily worship of Tripura Sundari. So this is what Arjuna did. And after several days, his worship bore fruit. When Tripura Sundari uh, appeared before him again. And this time she placed Arjuna in the care of one of her female attend attendants, a a another gopi. And she sent the two of them deeper into the forest of Vrindavan. And the specific area where they entered into, um, Padma Purana describes and I'll quote again, the transcendental realm in which Krishna is always absorbed in a great festival of love with his Brajabhasis. They, they entered into the transcendental realm in which Krishna is always absorbed in a great festival of love with his Brajabhasis. I want to go there. <laughs> Nowhere else. A.K. Kudanandana, one point of attention. Get me through the heavenly planets, <laughs> Vaikuntha, to Braj, to that realm <laughs> where um, Arjuna entered into. So as, as he walked through that part of Vrindavan's forest, Arjuna became so overwhelmed with a special love for Krishna that he'd, he'd never known before that he fainted. They just become overwhelmed by the 
association with that forest. He became overwhelmed with his love. He didn't, never knew it before, and it caused him to faint. And he was unconscious for some time. When eventually Tripura Sundari's maidservant, the girl who brought him there, she revived him. Now, it's described internally Arjuna now felt that he was a resident of the divine realm and the mood that prevailed there. But outwardly, he, he still appeared uh, uh, as, uh, as a, a soldier, as a warrior. So he, it's described he felt incomplete. <laughs> Internally, he has this proper mood of a Brajabasi, but he's got the body of a warrior. So he's feeling incomplete. So he asked um, the goddess who was accompanying him, um, Dear Gopi, is there some further penance I must undergo? So at that, that point, without even speaking a word, the, the goddess, the gopi, she led Arjuna in a southern direction to a lake that resembled um, a thousand-petaled lotus. It's described that the waters of the lake were tinged with the pollen of lotuses and perfumed by honey from the trees flowering by the lakeside. Again, this is real poetry. And the Padma Purana says that that lake was made sacred by, quote, Krishna's presence there during the annual celebration of the Spring Festival in honor of Cupid. So then the goddess uh, instructed Arjuna where and how to take bath in that lake. And then poof, she vanished. <laughs> and Arjuna um, did as he was told. And he, and he slowly immersed himself in that special sacred lake um, three times wearing only a thin loin cloth. And after coming out of the water, he, was, he, look, he looked and he was startled to see that his body was fully dressed and ornamented in attire befitting a milkmaid, a gopi. And then he glanced uh, uh, over the surface of, of the lake and he, he, he saw his reflection. <laughs> and he realized that, um, in the words of Padma Purana, he was now a wonderful, excellent lady who had a slim and fair charming body uh, uh, like, like that, that um, had an effulgence like pure gold, whose age was that of sparkling youth, whose face resembled the autumn moon, whose hair was very dark, curly and glossy, whose wagtail wag um, wag like eyes were dark, dark like clouds, whose round cheeks were sparkling due to the bright luster of jeweled earrings, whose wonderful creeper-like arms were delicate like uh, lotus stalks, whose sprout-like hands took away all the beauty of the autumn lotus, who had a waistband made of gold, whose hips were shining um, with jingling uh, girdles, let's see, whose lotus feet were very charming, due to the jingling of jeweled anklets, who possessed the skill of the various arts of love, and who was endowed with all good characteristics. <laughs> That's the reflection he saw. That's who Arjuna became, became a gopi. Internally, as we heard, and now externally. So it's interesting, Padma Purana goes on to say that Arjuna um, gradually forgot everything he'd known in his previous identity as a warrior in the Yadu dynasty, <laughs> just forgot it. <laughs> Let's forget all our material identities, Prabhus. And as he, or I think from now on we should say she, stood there, uh, she, she was momentarily confused about what to do. When suddenly a voice from the sky addressed her. <clears throat> uh, oh beautiful lady, walk along the path leading eastwards until you reach another lake. There you will meet more girls like you, friends who will help you fulfill your heart's desire. And with, subscribe, no other option than to obey this mysterious voice, 
Arjuna, now known as Arjuniya, Arjuniya Gopi. Arjuniya Gopi walked along that path and as, as she was walking, her, um, her amorous love for Krishna was like rising, it was steadily increasing. And in time she arrived at that lake and she sat down by the, by the water side. She didn't know exactly what to do. But from, th from the far side of the lake, Arjunia, uh, Gopi, she heard the sounds of um, tinkling ankle bells and the, the soft chattering and, and soft chattering voices of young girls. And as she looked closer, she saw a group of very beautiful young girls emerged from the forest. And um, Padma Purana says that Ar Arjuna could perceive, quote, uh, that mature amorous love, uh, could perceive that mature amorous love uh, was the root, that mature amorous love was the root cause of their spiritual qualities, bodily beauty, youthful sweetness, and aristocratic manners. That mature amorous love was the root cause of their spiritual qualities, their bodily beauty, their youthful sweetness, and aristocratic manners. That love brought forth all those good qualities. And then those girls, the gopis, they saw Arjunia from a distance. And they all turned to each other, and it's described in hushed tones. They were speaking amongst themselves. They could see Arjunia. Who, who is she? Where did, where did she come from? So quickly coming around the lake, all the girls came around the lake, and the leader of those gopis, her name was, uh, her name uh, was Priya Mudha. She approached Arjunia, sitting there. And she said, dear one, what is your name? Who are your parents? And in which village were you born? It troubles us to see that in this realm of delight, you appear bereft of a friend or lover. Wow, those are real friends. Dear one, what is your name? Who are your parents? And in which village were you born? It troubles us to see that in this realm of delight, this realm of delight, you appear bereft of a friend or a lover. So humbled by their, their concern, uh, Arjunia bowed down before them, this beautiful gopi bowed down before them and, and, and she replied, quote, I don't know anything about my identity, whose daughter or whose wife I am or how I came to this land. <laughs> I remember only that a, a goddess had me bathe in a lake nearby and then a voice directed me here. That voice told me I would find friends here who would help me fulfill my desire. O oh, illustrious ones, she's continuing to address these gopis, O oh, illustrious ones, whose beauty humiliates the wives of the demigods, the wi excuse me, the wives of the devas. If you think me qualified, please tell me who you all are, and most importantly, who is your lover? O oh, illustrious ones, whose beauty humiliates the wives of the devatas. If you think me qualified, please tell me who you all are. And most importantly, who is your lover? Then Priyamuda Gopi, she said, Oh, we are all the daughters of cowherds from nearby villages, and our lover is the blackish moon of Vrindavan, Sri Krishna. Then she pointed to the, um, the gopis that had accompanied her from the other side of the lake, and they were in f uh, four groups. And she said, it's interesting, she pointed to one group and she said, um, previously these gopis, um, they, uh, they were goddesses. Then she pointed to a, goddesses meaning like um, demi-goddesses. And then she pointed to another group and she said, the gopis in this group, they were previously the sacred Vedas. And she pointed to the third group and she said, the gopis in this group, they were previously sages. 
And this other group that she was part of, she said, the rest of us have always been milkmaids in this land. Meaning they're Nitya Siddhas, eternally liberated souls. And the other groups of gopis, they came from uh, goddesses, they came from the sacred Vedas, and they came from great sages. Nice details. And then she, um, she, she gave the names of some of the gopis if they're in the Padma Purana, because I'm always collecting names for initiations. I wrote down some of the names because they're just so beautiful. She just she gave the names of the gopis, so these are the names of some of those gopis. They're beautiful. And just to hear the names, your heart becomes purified. She said, here is Gauri Gopika, Rasa Valeri, Kamadayani, Rati Chintamani, Kala Kantika, Kriyavati, Shushila, Vashanti, Ramani Siromani, Keli Chanchali, Madhavikanta. There's so many names, but for time we won't say them all. Then she said, <coughs> Despite our, our diverse skills and various varied natures, our loving disposition to the Lord of Radha, Krishna, is our common bond. Now that providence has sent you to us, we will introduce you to the ways of our love. We will introduce you to the ways of our love. And then finally she said, in time you'll get to know all of us. So then Priyamuda, this, um, the leader of the gopis, Priyamuda, she took our, our journey by the hand and she said, I will now give you a mantra that will bring success in your quest. Through the chanting of the secret mantra, along with the teachings and meditations that I will give you that accompany it, you will be introduced to the worship of Sri Radha, the beloved of Krishna. Mm. By Radharani's grace, we are introduced to Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so you will be introduced to the worship of Sri Radha and the, uh, the beloved of Krishna. So then Priyamuda, she gave, uh, or Junia, or rather she, um, yeah, she gave her uh, a, a special grove in which to reside and visited her each day to offer her guidance and, um, and instruction. She gave her a mantra, various teachings, different ways to do meditation. She said that will introduce you to Sri Radha, the beloved of Krishna. Then she gave her a, a, a special grove to reside in. <laughs> she visited her each day to f give her further, further guidance and instruction, how to cultivate uh, that loving devotion. She said to her, it, it, at, one, at one point she said, that the, I'm, I'm going to help you uh, in this mood of loving devotion that's unique to the friends of Sri Radha, their love for Krishna, unique to the friends of Sri Radha. And how does Sri Radha love Krishna? We know she has the Mahabhav, the supreme love. So she's getting good guidance here, or Junia. So then one day, in, while Priyam, Priyamuda was visiting uh, Arjunia, Ar Arjunia's efforts bore fruit, it's described. When Srimati Radharani, along with a few companions, appeared in the grove, And Padma Purana states that, um, it describes Srimati Radharani coming into the grove. It says, Srimati Radharani appeared to be the source and sum total of all things sublime. She illuminated with her bodily luster the entire grove and everything in ten directions. Her complexion resembled a golden champak flower and her limbs were perfect in every way. The perfection of womanhood her smile and demeanor were kind and simple. So then Radha, Sri Radha, she came before uh, Arjuna, Gopi, and she raised her right hand uh, to give her a benediction. And she, this was the benediction. She said, Radha said, Arjuna, you have been favored by my friends whose words never go in vain. Therefore, very soon, I will personally arrange for you to have darshan with Krishna, the Cupid of Vrindavan. So when Arjuna heard this, this was her desire to understand the gopi's mood and to associate with Krishna. Uh, when Arjuna 
heard this, she fainted. <laughs> she fainted. And um, several gopis brought her back to consciousness. And then Radharani, she did three things. She assigned uh, Arjuna Gopi to, to another lakeside grove. She spoke a mantra composed of Krishna's, a uh, Krishna's names into her right ear. And then she bound her to an ancient vow known as Golokanatha. Couldn't find that vow, but she bound her to an ancient vow known as Golokanatha. Then uh, she blessed Arjuna with steady devotion to Govinda and taught her how to meditate upon dark complexion of Krishna. Yeah. So then Radharani, she said to Priyamuta, you could say is the mentor of Arjuna, um, I will return for Arjuna after she has received the grace of her worshipable deity. And then Radharani, um, she left. She described she went back to where her gopis were dancing to, to the song of Krishna's flute. <laughs> and Arjuna began to follow these new instructions she had received from Radharani herself. From that day on, she, uh, she rose early, she would bathe, she collected flowers for worship, offered herself to Krishna while singing songs about him. I thought that was very beautiful. That was her mood in kirtan. Her mood was offering herself to Krishna while singing songs about him, chanting from the heart. <laughs> and then in loving absorption, she recited the mantra composed of Krishna's names that Sri Radha had personally given her. So one day after some time, um, Priyamuda, her mentor, advised uh, Arjuna to draw a mystical diagram, a yantra, in the form of an eight-petaled lotus flower. And the ingredients would be um, bright yellow pigment, saffron, and sandalwood paste. And told her to, to offer that uh, to a drawing of Krishna. And she said, doing this, this will assure you of all success. Interesting. So Arjuna did this. And it's described that afterwards, uh, she developed an intense yearning uh, for this Braj Bhakti. And, and st stoking the fires of her love, she called out, Oh Krishna! Oh Krishna! Oh Krishna! <laughs> so Padma Prana says, at that very moment, Elsewhere in the forest, Sri Krishna turned to Radha and with raised eyebrows and a smile, he said, quickly, bring her here. <laughs> quickly, bring her here. Krishna knows everything, so he knew the desire of this gopi, Arjuna. And I think probably Radha had said something to him. <laughs> so Krishna turned to Radha and he said with a smile, bring her here. So Radha at once sent a, messengers, a messenger to where Arjuna was. And it's described that um, what, was, what was Arjuna doing? She was flooding the lake with her tears and calling out to Krishna in a sorrowful voice that, that caused the, the that, um, how does it describe? calling out to Krishna in such a sorrowful voice that leaves were following from the trees in pity. <laughs> calling out to Krishna in such a sorrowful voice that leaves were falling from the trees in pity. <laughs> so uh, when the messenger arrived, she embraced Arjuna and she said, friend, after today, you need cry no longer. And then she took Arjuna to where Krishna was in the forest and wiping the tears from Arjuna's eyes with the edge of her uh, own veil, she whispered into Arjuna's ear, Dear one, open your eyes now and see him for whom you have desired for so long. So at first when Arjuna uh, opened her eyes, um, she saw Krishna like enveloped in this golden effulgence. So she immediately fainted again to the ground. 
And after a few minutes, she, she came to, and she gradually uh, rose, as she gradually rose to her feet, others could see that her body was soaked in perspiration and her limbs were shaking like wind-blown leaves. And Padma Parana goes on to say that Arjuna lost herself in this vision of Krishna in a way possible only for a Brajagopi. And as she recovered from her vision, she was pleasantly surprised to see Krishna. She had this vision of Krishna, or there was Krishna, who, and I'll, I'll, I'll recite what she saw. It's very beautiful. It's quite long, but it's a very, very beautiful description of Krishna that Arjuna saw in this mood of a, of a Brajagopi. How she, how she saw Krishna. It's a long descrip description given in Padma Purana, but I'll, here it is, quote, Krishna, who, whose hair was very glossy, dark, curly, and fragrantly perfumed, on whose head was tied the best tail of a peacock, who was intoxicated with madness, on whose left side was the ear ornament of flowers resorted to by bees, who uh, was shining due to beautiful tilak, whose nose was lovely like, like the sesame flower or the eagle's beak, whose lips were charming, red, uh, like bimba fruits, and whose inflamed, passionate love was seen in his gentle smile, who looked lovely due to his necklace resembling a wildflower, whose large and charming shoulders were shining with a garland of flowers from a desire tree around which flew thousands of intoxicated female bees, who was adorned with the Kastubu jewel on his chest, who had the mark of Srivatsa, who was attractive on account of his hands hanging uh, down to his knees, who was very handsome on account of having his waist being like that of a lion with a deep navel, whose hips were covered with a portion of his yellow garment, who had vanquished thousands of cupids in beauty by means of his loveliness, who enchanted others by means of charming songs proceeding from his flute, who made the three worlds plunge into the ocean of happiness, who had the arrogance of Cupid in every part of his body, and who was tired due to his interest in dancing. Wow. Then it's described there were deities surrounding him to serve his every desire. And those deities had in their hands uh, fans, flowers, perfumes, mirrors, and drinking vessels, and frankincense. This is our Junius Darshan with Krishna. So what happened next? <laughs> So then Krishna very carefully took Arjuna's hand and he strolled with her through the gardens of nearby uh, Govindastali, sometimes playfully draping his arm over her shoulders. And when Ar Arjuna, I read, when Arjuna complained that the grass and sprouts were hurting her feet on, on the ground, Krishna picked her up and carried her to a flower garland where they rested some time sometime, and where Krishna uh, engaged in picking flowers and, and made a, a, a flower crown for Arjuna. <laughs> now many hours passed. Some suggest an entire night of Brahma. <laughs> where, quote, in a spontaneous way unique to the eternal residence of Vrindavan, Krishna and Arjuna Gopi exchanged loving glances, sweet words, and stroll together through the beautiful groves and gardens of Braj. Laughing and joking and exchanging loving glances, they brought their love to the greatest height. Then after diving and surfa surfacing in the nectarian and ever-increasing ocean of amorous love, Krishna slowly brought Arjuna back to where they had started. And there they were met by the knowing smiles and subdued giggling of their, of their gopi friends. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Arjun as Arjunia. He had that experience. Finally, Krishna turned to, to, to Priyamuda and he said, um, my friend, this girl with a sweet smile is fatigued <coughs> from our excursion to the forest of Braj. Take her to the lake for a refreshing bath. <coughs> so Priyamuda took Arjunia to this, well, actually took her back to the lake of a thousand petals where, where she had started. She'd first emerged as a gopi. And then uh, Priyamuda helped Arjunia Gopi to change into her bathing clothes. And then, it's a little sad, with, with the <laughs> said, and, and then with a voice slightly tinged with sadness, said to Arjunia Gopi, go ahead, my dear, refresh yourself. So then Arjunia Gopi, still reeling with delight as described, she walked down the stairs into the cool water painted silver by moonlight, and dipped into the water three times, like she had originally done. And when she surfaced for the third time, she came out chest deep in the, in the Jamuna, and, and um, she was surprised to see Krishna sitting comfortably on a cushion on, on top of a, a majestic ghat nearby. And before she could speak, she caught sight of a reflection in, in, in the lake. And that reflection no longer resembled a slim body gopi, but rather Arjuna, the powerfully built warrior prince. And realizing what had just happened, um, Arjuna now, with his eyes fixed on his dear friend Krishna, he slowly em uh, emerged from, from, the, from the lake. And it's described, he, as he emerged, he was feeling separation from his gopi identity, from the secrets of Braja, and his deep loving exchanges with Sri Govinda. Now he's Arjuna. But he was feeling separation from his gopi identity, from the secrets of Braja, and from his deep uh, loving exchanges with Govinda. At that point, his, his voice choked up, and unable to speak, he, he stood before Krishna with his arms hanging down, dejected. And, and he, he, he fell, came and he fell before Krishna and he buried his head in Krishna's lap and he was crying like a child, it said. And Krishna lovingly stroked Arjuna's head and consoled him with sweet words. And Padma Purana describes that, swept away by the, the torrent of Arjuna's emotions, Krishna's own tears moistened his hands as he comforted Arjuna. So gradually, both friends composed themselves, and sat, s sat side by side, but neither of, them, neither of them could speak of what they'd just been through. And the Acharyas say that, quote, Arjuna had uh, been truly blessed because as Krishna had told them, uh, had told him, loving pastimes between him and the gopis could only be, no be known by participating in those pastimes directly with body, mind, and disposition of a gopi. So then Krishna said, um, now you can understand Arjuna. Now you can understand. Because you are, so, you are so dear to me, I have disclosed these secrets to you. But let's keep them confidential, okay? Let's keep them confidential. So Arjuna nodded in agreement, and the two of them rose from there where they were sitting, and um, they mounted their chariots and returned to Astinapur, where they were greeted by the by Judishtir and all the uh, the all the citizens. And at that point, Arjuna's brothers, like uh, Bhima and uh, Nakul Sahadev they immediately noticed a change in Arjuna. But they couldn't describe, they couldn't determine its, co determine its cause. But Padma Purana says that still, as, as great transcendentalists, they also knew that some things are best left unsaid. I like that part. 
They couldn't determine the cause. It, it, Arjuna's changed. But um, still as great transcendentalists, they knew that some things are better left unsaid. So that night, and for many days afterwards, um, Arjuna, he remained in seclusion. And he, he, during that time, in, in seclusion, he was deeply immersed in chanting the mantras he had received in Braja and remembering his life as the gopi Arjuna, Arjuna gopi. And the Acharyas write that, that from that time on, Arjuna's meetings with Krishna were never the same as before. There was now a, a new dimension in their relationship, and it was revealed in how they looked at each other and they spoke to each other. Now Arjuna, he continued to love and to serve Krishna as a confidential friend, but he was always conscious that in, in eternal Vrindavan, he uh, he is or he what he was or he is serving Govinda as a paramour, along with Shirada's other friends. In other words, Krishna had not only given Arjuna insight into the ways of the Braja Gopis, but he'd also disclosed to Arjuna his parallel eternal identity as a cowherd girl. So in two forms, in two places, these two personalities, Arjuna and Arjuna Gopi, they eternally serve the Lord. Parallel eternal identities. <laughs> As a prince and a coward girl, that's Arjuna. But it, it, it's very interesting, because I was researching a lot, and then it's very interesting because I discovered that um, Arjuna and Arjuna, in a sense, they actually unite together in, another, in, in one pastime. How is that? Because um, along with uh, Lalita Devi, um, Arjuna, Pandav Arjuna and Arjuna come together. In other words, uh, Ramananda Roy, well Prabhupada actually says it very nicely in, in, in a purport to Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila 10, 134, he writes there, Ramananda Rai is the un incarnation of Lalita Gopi, Arjuna Gopi and Pandava Arjuna. There you go. Ramananda Roy is the incarnation of Alita Gopi, Arjuna Gopi and Pandava Arjuna. So they're the that in, they're there together. <laughs> Arjuna Gopi and Pandava Arjuna. Same person but in different pastimes. So and Prabhupada adds to that, I read, he said, in the opinion of others, Ramananda Rai is is, is also an incarnation of Vishaka Devi. So Ramananda Rai is a very confidential associate of Lord Chaitanya. When the Lord was in Jagannath Puri, Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar recited verses from Srimad Bhagavatam and other books to inspire Lord Chaitanya's feelings of separation from Krishna. So Lalita, Gopi, Arjuna, and Pandava Arjuna, Ramananda Rai. So there there's some, some uniting. <laughs> so in conclusion, we can see the powerful effect that Vrindavan, and especially the Kamivan forest, had on the Pandavas, and especially Arjuna, while spending some of their 13 years in exile there. And as such, it can have some effect on us too, if we choose. One reason Prabhupada wanted us to come to Vrindavan, it's a magical place. There's, tran there's purification, transformation, there's bhakti, there's love that comes as a result of just visiting the Dham or living in the Dham. So let's make a plan like that, that when <laughs> next Kartik we can come together and we can go to the Kamivan forest with the intention of becoming better devotees of Krishna. Yeah, especially Krishna. Um, Prabhupada makes that very clear that we want to become devotees of Krishna. In, in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verse 65, Prabhupada stresses this point. He says, quote, um, one should concentrate his mind upon Krishna, the very form with two hands carrying a flute, 
the bluish boy with that beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hair. One, fi one should fix his mind on this original form of Godhead Krishna. One should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord, such as Vishnu, Narayan, Ram, Varaha, etc. Devotees should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before Arjuna. <laughs> So based on Sridhar Prabhupada's words and with the knowledge we've gained today and also with the revelations given by, by Lord Chaitanya, it's recommended we follow Arjuna and his desire uh, to be a young Brajagopi in Vrindavan. It's very clear. Of course, other relationships are there in Vrindavan and that variety pleases Krishna very much. At such devotional service in any of those forms will guarantee us eternal life in the spiritual world. But achieving the special love of the gopis, that should be our best, in, that, that would be in our best interest, let's say. <laughs> and Krishna actually said that to the gopis when he met them at Kurukshetra. There's a beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10.82.44, where he where he glorifies the, the general process of devotional service, which will give one eternal life. But he points out to the gopis because of their, spe because of their special love for him, they have obtained him. Very special. So let's, let's finish today with that verse that kind of summarizes everything. Mai bhaktir hi bhutanam amritat vaya kalpate drishta yad asin much neho bhava tinam madapna apnaha Krishna says to the gopis rendering devotional service to me qualifies any living being for eternal life but by your good fortune you have developed a special loving attitude towards me by which you have obtained me Hare Krishna <laughs> wow so thank you everyone again um, for this wonderful opportunity to be sharing with you all these wonderful um, glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham, pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham, hearing about Krishna and his Radharani and all their associates and especially today this really nectarian pastime of, of hearing how Arjuna became Arjuna Gopi, giving a clear indication of what we should desire as Gaudiya Vaishnavas within our hearts. So we'll look forward to being with you again in, in, a, in a few days. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radhashama Sundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Shira Prabhupada Ki, the Vrindavan Forest Ki, Kambivan the Pandavas Ki, Arjuna Ki, Arjuna Gopi Ki, Gopi Minandi, JJ Sisi Radhe Sharm, Shira Prabhupada Ki. All right, Paul, see you soon.